This remote island in the Indian Ocean is the focus of an investigation. Where is American missionary John Chow's body? Indian authorities won't be sending anyone on shore to question this endangered tribe. That's just too risky for everyone involved. Numerous indigenous tribes boast rich traditions and customs. Contrary to popular belief, not all potentially hazardous tribes engage in face painting or extensive body modifications. Some appear indistinguishable from ordinary individuals. However, caution is advised when encountering such tribes, as some greet strangers with clubs, while others unleash a barrage of arrows. In today's video, you'll get to see the most intimidating tribes globally and uncover their capabilities. Here are the 20 scariest tribes you don't want to meet. Number 20. The Chukchi Tribe Nestled in the remote Chukotka Peninsula of Russia's Far East is the home of the Chukchi people, and they are believed to have been inhabited for about the last 7,000 years. They are short people with a swarthy complexion and a stocky build. Their faces are very broad and flat, the cheekbones are prominent, and the narrow eyes have a pronounced Mongolian fold. The eyes and hair are dark, and the hair is straight and stiff. They have no growth of beards. The diet of the Chukchi consists primarily of sea mammals, particularly whale, seal, and reindeer meat. They also collect berries, mushrooms, and other plants like wild sorrel and roseroot to eat in the summer. Chukchi religious beliefs and practices are a type of shamanism. All animals, plants, rivers, forests, and other natural phenomena are considered to have their own spirits. The Chukchi made their clothing from the skins of young reindeer and seals. Present-day Chukchi wear modern Western-style clothing, although in the winter, they will often wear some traditional clothing when they are out with their reindeer herds or hunting, as well as on public holidays and other special occasions. Go, go <laughs> Number 19. The Yanomami the Yanomami are the largest, relatively isolated tribe in South America. They live in the rainforests and mountains of northern Brazil and southern Venezuela. Like most tribes on the continent, they probably migrated across the Bering Straits between Asia and America some 15,000 years ago, making their way slowly down to South America. Today, their total population stands at around 38,000 people. The Yanomami traditionally live in communal dwellings known as shabonos, which are large circular huts constructed from wood, vines, and palm leaves. Within these communal spaces, multiple families coexist, sharing resources and responsibilities. Their society is egalitarian, with decisions made through consensus among community members. Agriculture is a common practice of this tribe, and they cultivate crops such as plantains, bananas, cassava, and yam. They also hunt for game meats, fish, and insects providing sources of protein. They are well-rooted in culture and traditions. Yanomami women decorate their faces with sticks that pierce the cheeks and lips as a form of makeup, and they also wear body paint for every occasion. Birth, death, war, party, and welcoming guests. The Yanomami are not wasteful. They reuse and recycle everything possible. Number 18. The Asaro Mudmen the Asaro tribe, better known as the Asaro Mudmen of Papua New Guinea, is a unique group of people with unique practices. Legend has it that they were defeated by an enemy tribe and forced to flee into the Asaro River, waiting until dusk before attempting to escape. They rose from the muddy banks covered in clay and returned to their village, not knowing the enemy tribesmen were still there. The enemy was so terrified of their ghost-like appearance that they fled in terror. One of the Asaro's rituals includes performing a dance for their visitors, which is traditionally intended to intimidate their enemies in the highlands of Papua New Guinea during battle. The dancers wear their traditional mud costume and move in unison, creating a mesmerizing spectacle for onlookers. The Asaro Mudmen have become a popular tourist attraction in Papua New Guinea, with visitors coming from all over the world to witness their traditional dances and learn about their culture. The tribe has also gained international recognition, with their costumes and dance being featured in various movies and documentaries. Number 17. The Batwa Tribe the Batwa tribe is believed to have lived in these forests for some 40,000 years. They collect and eat wild fruits and plants, game meat and wild honey from their surroundings. The size of the Batwa people is quite different from other tribes in Uganda, so they're considered short. Their men and women only rise up to four feet or less compared to the neighboring communities, as their traditional forest lands and territories fell under the control of agro-industries and conservation agencies. The Batwa became squatters living on the edges of society, and till date, 
They have experienced systematic and pervasive discrimination from the government and other sectors of society, and their rights as indigenous peoples are neither recognized nor respected. Today, the Batwa tribe are some of the poorest people in the world, with a low life expectancy and a high infant mortality rate. In October 2021, the PBS NewsHour reported that the Batwa population in Uganda has a life expectancy of just 28 years and that about 40% of children do not survive to the age of five. Health issues facing the Batwa include malnutrition, pneumonia, respiratory tract infections, and HIV AIDS. However, different agencies are trying to revive the original Batwa spirit of living in harmony and so create several programs and amenities like good water, access to health care, education, and so on. Mm. Number 16. The Kazakh Eagle Hunters In the far northwest corner of Mongolia, about 25 miles across Russian and Chinese mountains from Kazakhstan, there is a community of 87,000 people that still live by the traditions of their ancestors. They are known as the Kazakhs. They are said to be descendants of Huns and Turkic, Mongolic, and Indo-Iranian indigenous groups who lived in this area. The lifestyle of the Kazakh eagle hunters is deeply rooted in the nomadic traditions of their ancestors, characterized by seasonal migrations in search of grazing land for their livestock. It is often said that a Kazakh without a horse is like a bird without wings. Indeed, Mongolian horses are used, along with trained golden eagles, to help the Kazakh hunt. These eagle hunters are also known for their distinct clothing of boots, black jackets, and fox fur hats. Fur, including that from marmots, rabbits, and wolves, is an important part of Kazakh clothing. When so much of the world is dominated by technology and construction, it is exciting to come across a part of the world that is relatively untouched. Number 15. The Suri. The Suri are an agro-pastoral people and inhabit part of Ethiopia as well as parts of neighboring South Sudan. The Suri have lived in the Ethio-Sudan border area for many generations, successfully surviving through a combination of livestock herding, some hunting and gathering, rain-fed cultivation of a variety of field crops like millet, corn, and sorghum, and garden cultivation of legumes, spice plants, peas, and beans. The Suri are a very interesting and tough people who have had their share of problems with neighboring tribes. As part of their rituals, female members of the tribe have distinctive clay discs inserted into holes in their bottom lips, which are considered signs of beauty. To have the discs inserted, their bottom two teeth are removed before the hole is cut. The larger the plate, the more cows the girl's father can demand in dowry when his daughter marries. Cows also have a social and symbolic meaning in Suri society. The average man owns between 30 to 40 cows. The Suri have a traditional belief system with a supreme sky deity called Tumu. In the past 15 years, Christianity has gained adherence among the Suri, notably among those in the town of Kibish and those that left the area to study. Nevertheless, the Suri are still neglected and marginalized by the government. Their participation in social, economic, and political life in South Sudan has been nil. Number 14. The Mashko Piro Tribe The Mashko Piro Tribe is believed to have lived in the jungle for over 600 years. In 1894, most of the Mashko Piro Tribe was slaughtered by the private army of Carlos Fitzcarrald in the upper Manu River area. The survivors retreated to the remote forest areas and have lived in isolation since then. The sightings of the Mashko Piro tribe members increased in the 21st century. According to anthropologist Glenn Shepard, who had an encounter with the Mashko Piro in 1999, the increased sightings of the tribe could be due to illegal logging in the area and low-flying aircraft associated with oil and gas exploration. In September 2007, a group of ecologists filmed about 20 members of the Mashko Piro tribe from a helicopter flying above the Alto Puras National Park. The group had established a camp on the banks of the Las Piedras River near the Peruvian and Brazilian borders. Scientists believe that the tribe prefers to construct palm leaf huts on riverbanks during the dry season for fishing. In August 2013, the BBC reported that a group of Mashko Piros had been seen apparently asking neighboring villagers for food. The Peruvian government has banned contact with the Mashko Piros for fear that they might be infected by strangers with diseases to which the Mashko Piros have not built up immunity. Although in 2015, the Peruvian government announced that it would attempt to help and potentially contact them. The tribe has been sighted more and more frequently and its members have reportedly killed local villagers. Number 13. The Chimbu Tribe The Chimbu also pronounced Simbu, 
live in the mountainous central highlands of Papua New Guinea. An ethnic and linguistic group, not traditionally a political entity, the Chimbu are speakers of Kuman and related dialects. The term Chimbu was given to the people by the first Australian explorers in the early 1930s who heard the word Simbu, an expression of pleased surprise in the Kuman language. The primary subsistence crop in Simbu is the sweet potato, and they are grown in fenced and tilled gardens. Crafts of clothing and tool making, now largely abandoned, were their hobby. They made wooden tools and weapons and constructed fences and houses. They also made artifacts of cane, bamboo, and bark. They are also highly artistic. The visual arts are concentrated on body decoration with shells, feathers, wigs, and face paint being worn at times of ceremonial importance. Number 12. The Taboli Tribe The Taboli Tribe, also known as the Tagabili Tribe, is an indigenous group residing in the province of South Cotabato on the island of Mindanao in the Philippines. The Taboli people have a rich cultural heritage that dates back centuries, characterized by their unique customs, beliefs, and artistic traditions. The Tabolis are people of medium build. They are light in complexion. Some of them are square-jawed. Their hair may be curly or straight. Like other hill people, the Taboli subsist on hunting, fishing, and cultivation. The rivers, lakes, and marshes of the region have always been the source of the fish caught by using fishing rods, spews, nets, and other traps. Mudfish, catfish, freshwater shrimp, and snails are common food items. Recent updates within the Taboli tribe have focused on efforts to preserve their cultural heritage and promote sustainable development. This is because the Taboli have many physical needs. Many Taboli have little or no access to medical care. Education is inadequate, and the great majority of adults are illiterate. Running water and modern sanitation systems are virtually non-existent, and electrical power can only be found in a few neighboring villages. Number 11. The Ambera. The Ambera, also known in historical literature as the Chaco or Katio Indians, are an indigenous people of Panama and Colombia. There are approximately 33,000 people living in Darien, Panama, and 50,000 people in Colombia who identify as Embera. Even though there are plenty of natural resources for them, much of the area is a national park, which means they are no longer allowed to hunt or grow subsistence crops as they always have. Traditionally, the Embera people live in an extended family group along one of the many rivers, and to access a school for their children, many families now have to relocate closer to a more populated area. This means leaving the rainforest and river behind, and relying on money and stores to provide your food, with little opportunity to earn an income to support your family. Number 10. The Batak Tribe The Batak is one of the indigenous people of Palawan. Since ancient times, they have inhabited a series of river valleys along the 50-kilometer stretch of coastline northeast of what is today Puerto Princesa City. They are considered to be of Negrito stock. Their physical attributes show short structure, dark skin, and curly hair, which earned these distinctive-looking people their name. Their economic activities revolve mostly around Swidden farming, hunting, and gathering natural resources products, and honey gathering. Their foods came exclusively from the forest, rivers, creeks, and sometimes the sea. This is the primary reason they are not motivated to cultivate permanent land areas for crop production. Traditionally, they only plant cassava, bananas, sweet potatoes, and coconuts. The population of the Batak at the turn of the century was estimated at 1,000, but the latest census made in 1990 placed them at only 450 people. Today, the Batak are threatened by conservation schemes, such as a government ban on shifting cultivation and the declaration of protected areas within their ancestral lands. There are now fewer than 300 Batak, down from about 1,000. Severe undernourishment has also made them more vulnerable to diseases such as malaria, measles, and tuberculosis. Number 9. The Mokan Tribe there are a number of distinct ethnic groups alive in the world today whose existence can be said to be semi-aquatic. Their entire lives are centered upon the sea, and they subsist predominantly on seafood and the trading produce they harvest from the sea. The Mokins, an Austronesian ethnic group with about 2,000 members who maintain a nomadic sea-based culture, are one of these ethnic groups. The Mokin do not have a written language, and their history is passed down verbally through folklore from generation to generation. The Mokin are animists, and have great understanding and respect for their environment and natural resources. In past times, the Mokan people were subsistence hunter-gatherers, trading shells, sea cucumbers, and fish for rice and other necessities. The population of all sea nomads has decreased since the early 20th century because of disease, intermarriage, and attrition, as many became land settlers as a result of government intervention. 
Number 8. The Agori Tribe The Agoris are a sect of ascetic Shaivite sadhus who practice a unique and extreme form of Hinduism. They are known for their bizarre and unconventional rituals, such as dwelling on cremation grounds, smearing ashes on their bodies, using human skulls as utensils, and eating flesh from human corpses. They are also devoted to Shiva, the god of destruction and transformation. The origin and history of the Agoras are shrouded in mystery, as they are a secretive and elusive group. They don't believe in covering their bodies. They wear nothing more on their bodies except a thin jute loincloth and, at times, a nude. According to their beliefs, being destroys shame. The Agoras have a frightening sense of fashion when it comes to accessories. They like to wear the human skulls and thigh bones of cremated people as jewelry. Moreover, they are big fans of smoking marijuana. Agori sadhus take heavy doses every day because they believe it helps them concentrate on their yogic practices and mantras. Number 7. The Dogon Tribe The Dogon people may have originated in Egypt and settled in Libya briefly. The Dogon people are estimated to have settled in Bandiagara, Africa, between the 14th and 16th centuries. Today, it is estimated that the Dogon ethnic group is composed of about 400,000 people. They practice subsistence agriculture based on millet, sorghum, rice, onions, peanuts, and some vegetables. Additionally, they grow tobacco and have livestock. Their culture is patrilineal, and villages are structured around occupation status, for which farmers are highly revered. The Dogon are known for their intricate knowledge of astronomy, as reflected in their architecture, rituals, and their spiritual beliefs. In recent years, the Dogon tribe has faced challenges such as environmental degradation, climate change, and socio-political instability. Efforts have been made to preserve their cultural heritage and promote sustainable development within their communities. NGOs and government initiatives focus on supporting Dogon artisans, promoting ecotourism, and providing access to education and healthcare. Number 6. The Himba Tribe The Himba people are a semi-nomadic tribe who have lived in northern Namibia since the 16th century, after crossing the borders of Angola. They are known for their distinctive red ochre body paint and intricate jewelry, as well as their deep-rooted cultural traditions and beliefs. The Himba people have a unique relationship with their environment and are skilled in agriculture, animal husbandry, and hunting. Hence, they are predominantly livestock farmers who breed fat-tailed sheep and goats, but count their wealth in the number of their cattle. They also grow and farm rain-fed crops such as maize and millet. Livestock are the major source of milk and meat for the Himba. They are proud and independent people who have managed to preserve their way of life despite the modern world encroaching upon them. It is customary for the women to engage in the daily activities of milking cows and taking care of the children while the men go hunting, sometimes leaving for long periods of time. Before we continue, here is today's subscriber's pick. It is not unusual for some local tribesmen to have extremely blue eyes, wide ears, and teeth. While there haven't been scientifically proven tribes that look like this in recent times, if you ever encounter someone who looks this way, it is advisable to take a moment to observe or to keep a respectful distance. It is essential not to judge anyone solely based on physical appearance, but to engage with them respectfully and learn about their culture and customs. Ultimately, understanding and respecting diversity among human populations enriches our collective experience. Number 5. The Tuvan Tribe the Tuvan people are a Turkic ethnic group native to Tuva in Central Asia. They number around 200,000 and live in Russia, Mongolia, and China. The Tuvan tribe has its own unique language and culture, which have been passed down through the generations. Tuvan people are known for their throat singing, a form of music that uses the voice to produce two or more notes simultaneously. One of the sounds is like a Jew's harp's metallic warbling, while the other is like a growling moan. These sounds are achieved by regulating the larynx, mouth, and abdominal muscles carefully. Some of the songs were composed to mimic sheep and goat noises. Most Tuvans are semi-nomadic cattlemen, horse breeders, sheep herders, yak herders, and goat herders. The Tuvans traditionally live in a yurt, which is a felt cloth covered wooden frame tent. This type of housing is perfect for the nomadic nature of the Tuvan people since it is very light and easily portable. Number 4. The Dinka Tribe Dinka are people who live in the savanna country surrounding the central swamps of the Nile Basin, primarily in South Sudan. They are considered the tallest African tribe, while men measure an average of 6 feet 4 inches and women measure 6 feet on average. The reason for their height is still a mystery, but it is believed that their nutrition, which is largely based on meat and dairy, might be the reason why. 
Because of the vast geographic area they occupy, the Dinka exhibit a great diversity of dialects. Although they value intra-group unity in the face of enemies, the Dinka groups retain the traditional pastoral life of the Nilatis, but have added agriculture in some areas, growing grains, peanuts, beans, corn, and other crops. Symbolically, cattle are of the utmost importance to the Dinka. These animals form the foundation of their livelihood, religion, and social structure. The Dinka tribes do not slaughter cattle only for their meat. They consider it a sacrifice for the gods, too. Besides the educated ones from their tribes, they do not know that they are called Dinka from the outside world. They call themselves Jeng. Number 3. The Maasai Tribe Known for their striking traditional dress, unique customs, and long-standing connection to the land and its wildlife, the Maasai are a source of great interest and intrigue to people around the world. But beyond the surface, there are many fascinating and little-known facts about this ancient tribe that are waiting to be discovered. They do not have a clear written history. Much was unknown about them prior to European exploration. The Maasai people are true nomads at heart. They have lived a life of constant movement and adaptation for centuries, wandering the vast savannas of East Africa in search of grazing land for their cattle. The Maasai are known for their striking and colorful clothing, which is an important part of their culture and identity. Music and dance plays, which feature high jumps and synchronized movements, play an important role in Maasai culture and mark various occasions, including weddings, festivals, and rituals. Unlike most cultures that bury their dead, the Maasai have a tradition called predator burial, where they leave the bodies of their deceased loved ones for scavengers to eat. They believe that the human body is just a vessel for the spirit, and the spirit will continue to exist even after the body is gone. They also believe that burying the body will pollute the soil and harm the ecosystem. This tradition is slowly fading out as more modern Maasai communities have begun to adopt burial practices. Number 2. The Karubo Tribe The Karubo, or Karubu, also known as the Tslala, are an indigenous people of Brazil living in the lower Vale do Javari in the western Amazon basin. Much of what the outside world knows about this group is based on the research of Brazilian explorer Sidney Pozuelo, who first contacted the tribe in October 1996, and journalist Paul Raphael. The Karubo are some of the last people on Earth to live in near isolation from modern society, although they have, on numerous occasions, had violent contacts with the surrounding communities. Their hunting and weapon of choice is the club, and aside from poison darts, they use no other ranged weapons. Their workday is about four to five hours long, and they often live inside large communal huts, known as malocas. Both men and women paint themselves with a red dye from the ruku plant. Their diet includes fish, spider monkeys, peccary, birds, wild pigs, fruit, manioc, and corn. It is a very small tribe, consisting of only 150 people. The indigenous Karubo people have recently entered into contact with the national society, but some Karubo families still remain in isolation. Number 1. The Sentinelese the Sentinelese, also known as the Sentinelli and the North Sentinel Islanders, are indigenous people who inhabit North Sentinel Island in the Bay of Bengal in the northeastern Indian Ocean. They vigorously reject all contact with outsiders. In November 2018, John Allen Chow, an American missionary, was killed by members of the Sentinelese tribe while trying to convert them to Christianity. In 2006, Two Indian fishermen, who had moored their boat near North Sentinel to sleep after poaching in the waters around the island, were killed when their boat broke loose and drifted onto the shore. The Sentinelese have made it clear that they do not want contact. Survival international lobbies, protests, and uses public pressure to ensure their wish to remain uncontacted is respected. None of the Sentinelese language is known to outsiders. Anthropologists usually make a point to refer to people by the name they use for themselves, but no one outside North Sentinel Island actually knows what the Sentinelese call themselves, let alone how to greet them or ask what their view of the world and their role in it really looks like. What we know for sure is that they don't care much for company, and they've expressed that clearly even without a common language. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching.